So a couple of days ago, a fella named Noah Kagan, who has an awesome YouTube channel, he, he posted something on Twitter about how he had a private a private place. He had invested in a private placement as a limited partner. So in a syndicated piece of real estate. And that is what my group at Invictus does. He did not invest in our deal, but um, he invested into a deal and he found out that that deal was going to be foreclosed on, which means he lost his hundred thousand dollars. And not only that. But um, because of the way that the tax laws work, you get all the tax benefits of these investments at front loaded, but that all gets recouped upon a sale or some kind of exit event. And so not only did he lose his 100,000, but he also lost I think another $30,000 of tax benefits. And so that has to come out of somewhere. And that's all, that's all, that all sucks. You know, when you talk about, when you hear a lot of people talk about real estate, myself included, we talk about it through like the lens of it's a great investment vehicle. It's, it's fantastic. It's made more millionaires than any other vehicle. Um, and that can paint a rosy picture that it only ever goes well. But the truth is like, there's a lot of ways real estate can go wrong and you can lose money. And you might look at that situation. He shared some of the details of the deal itself and you could look at it and make all sorts of judgments. And a lot of people did on Twitter. They looked at the details of the deal and they're like, this was a bad deal to begin with. Why did you ever do this? There was a bunch of red flags in there that you can easily point out in hindsight. Um, and maybe even in the moment you would have pointed them out too, but it created this pylon effect on Twitter where a lot of people in the uh, real estate Twitter space, they all kind of like started to jump in and say, like kind of bag on the, the GP, the operators who, you know, for their side, they, <coughs> they were like, they have about a billion dollars of assets under management. So this is not a small operation ostensibly they know what they're doing. They've been doing it for a while. And so you look at it and say, well, why would you ever do this type of a deal? And I was, I was just, I was thinking hard about this this morning and journaling of, about it because um, I think often when we succeed personally, we chalk it up to luck or we chalk it up to skill. We say, oh, I succeeded because I'm skillful. And when we personally fail, we say things like, oh, I got unlucky or it was a bad market. All right. And so when we succeed, we call it luck. I'm sorry. When we succeed, we call it skill. When we fail, we call it luck. Whereas when we watch other people succeed, we tend to call that luck. Like, oh, he just got lucky. And when they fail, we're quick to point out that it was due to stupidity. <laughs> and so it's, a, it's this interesting blend because, you know, we give ourselves the benefit of the doubt that when we succeed, it's skill. And when we fail, it's luck. But when somebody else succeeds, they got lucky. And when they fail, it's because they're stupid. And... I just, I, I think a lot about this because just because you haven't failed yet, especially in this business of real estate, doesn't make you better than those who have. Like you can do everything right and still lose. That's not weakness. That's just life. That's how it goes. And the flip side of that is also true, which is that you can do everything wrong and still win. That's not genius. You know, that's just luck. So I think you just have to be humble. You got to do your best and you have to give everybody else the benefit of the doubt because tomorrow it could be you. And I think that's the takeaway, whether you're in real estate or you're just an entrepreneur in general, is it's very easy to look at the people who failed and say, oh, you shouldn't have done this, this, and this, and call them stupid. And like, of course you would never have made those same mistakes. But then <coughs> who knows? You might find yourself in a similar position tomorrow. Some tables might turn and some unforeseen events and that you couldn't have seen, but maybe somebody else will say that they could have seen it. And so you just need to be really cognizant that we're not ever getting too high on our own supply and thinking, oh, that could never happen to me. Whenever I see something like this, like another group having struggles like this, I go, I just ask myself like that, what could have happened? What, what could happen to make that me, be me, right? Like what am I not seeing right now about what we're doing that is a complete blind spot that could be opening us up to that type of catastrophic failure because surely they didn't see the risk in the same way, right? Otherwise they wouldn't have taken it or they would have done something different. So it's very rare that you, you get, sh you get killed by the thing that you saw coming. It's very rarely that it's usually the thing that you just didn't expect to see. And as a result, because you didn't expect to see it right now, because you are successful, quote unquote, the thing that could derail you is something that you're not even considering. And so spending the time to assess that, what would be those things that might throw me off or my business for my real estate for whatever, like the best investors are the best ones at hedging against the risk, the downside. And the only way to do that is to 
have as full of a picture as possible of the potential downside. That's why I'm a big fan of doing an annual risk audit of your life where you look and say, okay, where are my weak points? Where am I vulnerable? What are the things that could go wrong? And just start putting this powerful um, problem solving machine to work. You know, that's your brain and asking yourself, what could go wrong? And then what would you do right now? If you knew that was going to happen in six months, what would you do right now to make sure that that didn't happen or to mitigate the, the effects of that? And I think by doing that regularly, you just become a more conscientious, more well-prepared investor and an operator. So maybe do your risk audit. You know, we're entering into the new year. It's very fun to set like forward projected goals and think about all the great things that are going to happen. And maybe spend an afternoon and just think about what could all go wrong and what am I going to do to mitigate those, those potential points of failure. Do that and you'll just be that much more robust, that much more resilient, and uh, you'll sleep a little bit better at night. So that's going to do it for me, guys. I hope this brings you a little bit of value. As always, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you back around these parts tomorrow. But until then, stay hyper-focused, my friends.